there is this idea that craft is sort of your, your engagement with materials and with what you do. Um, and I think you talk extensively about this idea that craft is not always, you know, it's, it's kind of this blurry boundary where you're touching something out of the blue, it connects with you. Um, and you don't know why, right? It, 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 but at the same time, as you're kind of gaining mastery, mastery of your process, and kind of trying to engage this, there's always this sort of hesitation, right? You, you don't know what you're grabbing or not. Um, I'm curious, because both of your projects are highly technical, right? In some ways, they're equally about the making and the softness, as they are about being incredibly precise, incredibly specific about how they take place. And in between that, there's this interesting accidents and, and negotiation. So I, I would like to see what your perspective is. And, and I know there's probably more questions um, that we'll open up to. But what is your perspective on the idea of craft? What is craft to you? And how do you negotiate technology within this, this paradigm? I think that uh, we have lost sight of how important it is to have uh, this sense of craftsmanship and, and this idea of someone working on something, there is a spiritual component which is not escapable, not describable, and I, I feel it. Like every one of those pieces of stone on the inside of the temple were hand softened to create, a, a, and so that the edges become slightly rounded as well, but the surface has this kind of softness. The glass, the same thing. We see it all the time. Anyone who's ever sanded down a piece of wood knows what I'm talking about. You have the wood, and somehow when you start to sand it, you start to get something. And I think that uh, we have thrown away this idea of craftsmanship by and large. And it's going to come back and I believe that it's a huge part of connecting ourselves back to the soul of what we do, uh, very much. And this idea of patina is tied to that too. Mm -hmm. That uh, the, the way materials age, it's not just how they come together, but it's the way that they age is also a very big part of this discussion. Yeah, I think uh, the craftsmanship uh, uh, it's kind of culture in China. Um, 5,000 years ago, uh, how the Chinese Asian people built building the like, timber structure very much. And I think this kind of tradition is building the ballet of every architect. The most important right now I want to talk about is about the difference between the ethics and um, uh, ethic. I think. Uh, the beauty is, is important as we're training. I'm the professor and teaching my students. I think as uh, undergrad students, one of the most important uh, aspects we want, feature we want to teach the students is how to, to training them to have a, a special ability to judge if it's beautiful or not. But after we go to the, uh, the social networks, I think especially from China, it's a huge population, a lot of social problems. It's not just about the beauty, it's about the social networks, it's about architecture is not just belong to the architects themselves, but belong to the social production system. And um, the technology is part of that, the beauty is also part of that, because everyone is like to make their home, make the public buildings beauty. But at the same time, if we're talking about budget, we're talking about efficiency, we talk about the, the customization is when the new trend of culture coming, uh, we need something new, I think. The new thing should balance the relationship between the beauty and ethics. I think uh, that what we are doing is we, we, we set up certain kind of tools. It's not just as, uh, authorship to the signature architect, but also we try to teach them to the other industry people and, and fabricators. I think that will play uh, significant roles in the future because the technology will 
help us not just make our life beauty, but also make the living standard, the whole social networks more better. I think that is uh, my understanding to this. I come in from the art, art family. My, my grandmother is from Japan. He's a pianist. My grandfather is a childist. My elder sister is a violinist. So all when I growing up, it's full of the, the music, full of the art atmosphere in, in my uh, childhood. I, I think that is beauty in my blood. I think if I, I, I always talk to my students, if you cannot make a building beautiful, you could not be a signature, signature architect. That is the fundamental, basic taste of a good architect. But when I become the professor, I think uh, how we're learning from the past, from the tradition, especially this kind of craftsmanship. We have traditional material like timber structure, like bricks, like concrete, there's all the traditional things. And also we need to critically think about new material, plastic. We have a lot of waste plastic and how to make reuse of them to build something new for the future. I think the craftsman for the future is something we need to link the past to the future. That is our generation, the new generation of the architects should learning from the university, should make research on that. Maybe that is not directly coming to a building, it's just a pavilion or maybe just a craftsman research. But I think permanently, uh, grouply, people from all of the world, if we're pushing this kind of new technology, our future will be changed by the new craftsmanship. I could be asking a lot of questions about interdisciplinary and past and future, but leading it to the future, you guys, any questions for them, for the panel? We're gonna get feedback. Interestingly enough for me, the wall's the easy part. The terror is the hard part. It's the night watchman part that's the really hard part. Uh, because you, you get taken in a place, you don't know where you're going, right? And, and it's just pushing you. The, the, the wall part is hard work. It's just staying with it. It's, it's, and so I would say that part of this project that I showed you was really when we were in the mode of the fabrication, the you know, the, putting it all into the katia, the machine to machine, getting it on budget. All of that was a bit scary. We didn't know really where we were gonna go. A lot of dark alleys, but it was nothing like the terror of, of the early stages where you're completely at the leading edge of something and you don't know if, you, you have absolutely no idea You've, you've promised the world you're going to build this, and you have no idea whether you will or not. That was, that was, that was I think, the terror part. And also the land, not knowing where it was going to land. So that, I think there is a, but I would urge you not to take those two things as negatives. I would, I would urge you to take them as positives. Like if, if you're not feeling terror, if you're not feeling the wall in your work, I would, urge you to strive for that because I think that's what really you end up living for. It's really a, it's a, it's a great place to be. Rather than the, the thing that I told you about where everybody in the class was drawing square windows because we all knew we were going to end up with one, 
one design looking like the next design. It was almost like everyone understood exactly how to get through studio. It was just make sure you had mylar ink and a square window, and you'd be okay. And I think that I, I, I think that 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 would be my concern at that time that we that that the students be given the chance to ex to explore that that place that puts them in that state of terror and puts that puts them in that place where they really need to work hard to get to the Lely. You, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to because you once you connect to that to that mode, you're in that you're in that state which you say, "Oh my god, as crazy as this is, as difficult as this is, I feel like I want another shot of this somehow." And it keeps you going. You go through it and then you keep going to the next one. big shift from um, like mass production products to like a customization um, and I'm, I'm just kind of wondering like what what you think this does for a society that that's really concerned with like environmental envi environmental issues I guess that's my question it's a good question uh, things uh, today is timeless not enough uh, how we uh, thinking how to address our research and practice in the uh, discipline of architecture. I think right now, the most uh, several aspects you mentioned is the mass production is switched from the, all the windows are same, all the doors are same, to the customized. Maybe in the one building, all the windows could be different. And you should very efficiently finish the building and very good control the budget. So that revolution is coming because the customization needs the new industry. That's already happening in the car industry, in the, in the other, I think, architecture is slow. Architecture is a very ancient, slow industry. But I think uh, something will be changed. Uh, why we set up um, our robotic factory, although no one support me at the very beginning, but I believe this kind of things will change the future. And uh, at the end of 2018, this year, we try to build a few, the first robotic timber structure factory in China. So that is what we're doing. I'm thinking the architects should have some thinking, not just on the building itself, but we need to think about the industry. In the design process, when we make some performance-based design, which relate a lot to the structure, to the environment simulation, and also to the behavior simulation. That kind of things in the past is just make decision by the designer in uh, simultaneous ways by a very good trained uh, if, uh, professional and the signature architect there, like the God, make everything decision very fast. But right now the computer, the big data, can very fast visualize a lot of things you cannot visualize before. So which can make very quick decision open to everyone because the artificial intelligence is coming. This kind of performance future is is open source future. The decision making could be very smart than our imagination. That's happened. Because the simulation, optimization, this kind of process made things will replace the representation thinking of the past. So that's what we're doing. We want to link this kind of process-based new materialism to the new industry. That is what architecture discipline is happening right now. Uh, so the simulation things could be a kind of reference to the decision maker, to a signature architect. You can take more information before you make a decision, and you can present different ways to communicate with your partners with, to the client. That is ways of working. When you teach the students, when you te teach the new generation how to work with the other peoples in the future. So the, everything is changed. It's kind of paradigm shift. It's kind of model shift. Because the building, if the building 
looks like what we're sitting in this kind of room, auditorium, or the future auditorium could be totally different to this kind of things. We, we should imagine the future. The future is not just on the paper, in your computer, or in your mind, but we should making it. We should use you, new tools to making the new future. That is what I'm saying to you. Uh, but I just, I just want to say one thing because I just got to get this off my chest. Uh, I really think that this whole, the, 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 this uh, imperative that's out and in front of you on the environment is really quite uh, misleading. And I, w I would like to just chat about it a little bit. First of all, it's slightly arrogant because uh, we have um, always, and if you look back 40 or 50 years ago, there's a lot more intelligent consideration of architecture with the environment. And if you go back a couple hundred years ago, it gets way more intelligent. And if you go back even before that, it even gets more intelligent. So take a look a little bit because it's this idea that suddenly we've woken up and discovered that there's the sun and the wind and all of this stuff and it's not true, okay? First of all, secondly, um, I think that we are the most wasteful, like I mean there will be a time when generations will look back at us and say we were pathetic because we are so deeply materialistic. and. And so I think this is our way of just scratching ourselves on the back and going, oh, aren't we nice? Well, we're still making all this crap and this junk and these big buildings made all of glass and we're so smart because we pattern them the right way and we put a, bit, a little bit of screen in front of them. And so be careful because this is the human um, proclivity to make itself feel better, you know? this in, in, the, in the big scheme, but the real problem is that we have a huge, I think, spiritual crisis and this then relates to how we have this crazy desire for more and more and more goods and I'm, a, I'm as guilty as anyone and so this, I think it's a much bigger issue than what they can teach you here at architecture. Well, all we can do is basically put a little bit of this and a little bit of that and we all do it we're all constantly selling it. We always tell everyone how mindful we are and look how smart we are and you know, okay, so we have the energy consumption at the end of the temple has been designed so that it consumes energy no more than, a, than two bungalows. That was the, the thing that we did and we can go through that with you. But all I'm saying is I think that uh, it's kind of for me a somewhere between an orange and a red flag right now in this world of pedagogy because I think that it can be all just a big shimmer that everyone's teaching you how to be so sensitive to the environment when really the big issue is that we're just producing so much bad junk and to throw away the intelligence the deep intelligence of our forebears is is really hugely arrogant on so many levels but this is one of them like to think that oh um, these generations knew nothing about, you know, the, the kind of qualities of decency and humanity and that suddenly we woke up and we've become so humane. It's really a very dangerous way of thinking in any form and especially in the study of architecture. Thank you.